Hey, I'm Chris Troy, host of St. Clair County Risa's Moment in History, and I'm here in Marine City to take a look at one of the most important men in the Blue Water area to historic preservationists like myself. For 19 years, this man captured more images of the Blue Water area than any other photographer that we're aware of. Born August 11, 1868 in Ontario, Canada, Louis James Pesha worked in the farming industry until 1895 when he learned the art of photography. Over the next six years, Pressure would go on to open studios throughout Ontario in cities such as Oil Springs, Inwood, Elveston, and Brigden. Lewis would continue sharpening his skills by taking photos of clients who would sit for him in his studios. The only problem was that in the late 1800s, the cost of sitting for a portrait was expensive, which created a very short client list. On August 29, 1892, Pressure married Leah E. Francer. Francer was a daughter of Gilbert Francer, who met Pesha while sitting for a photograph in his Santana, Illinois studio. It was Lena who convinced Lewis to pack up his camera and try something new. With the creation of the Penny Post, Pesha realized that he could take one photograph, mass produce it, and in a form of postcard, make a pretty good living. Although postcards had existed in 1861, the U.S. Post Office had a monopoly on printing them. It wasn't until 30 years later, in 1891, that individual photographers, illustrators, and printmakers had the ability to create and design their own postcards to be used throughout the postal system. The 1893 Columbian Exposition was the turning point for postcard distribution, selling the first postcards that allowed the backside to be used for an address and a short message. The combined back of the postcard left the entire front of the postcard blank for a canvas for artists to decorate. Postcards of the time were becoming very popular as even people with lower incomes were beginning to travel and wanted to collect souvenirs along the way. Pesha, like many others, embraced the chance to share his art to a wide audience. In 1901, he settled in Marine City to open his studio right along the banks of the St. Clair River, allowing him to shoot various ships that sailed right by his own front door. His passion for storytelling through photography didn't stop there, though. Throughout his time in Michigan, Pesha traveled along the Great Lakes Basin, photographing everything from railroad stations, street activities, and daily life of people in and around the city. Pesha studios were a huge success, and by 1910, Louis Pesha was credited by Photographic Magazine as one of the most popular photographers of the year. That same year, Pesha purchased a luxury steam automobile produced by the White Automobile Company. On October 1, 1912, Louis James Pesha was visiting his parents in Ontario when his white automobile overturned, killing him instantly. Following Pesha's death, in 1912, Lena continued to run the business in Marine City until about 1920 when she decided to move the business to Detroit. Lena began reissuing old photographs but changed the number of the photo and instead of simply having the name Pesha on the card, relabeled it Copyright L. Pesha. By the 1920s though, photo postcards were no longer in fashion, so in 1921 the studio closed for good. In order to make some extra money, Lena sold off plate by plate to window manufacturers because at the time the glass that the photo was printed on was worth more than the photo itself. The vast majority of these glass negatives were destroyed. Today original Pesha postcards and photographs are highly sought after for both nostalgic reasons and quality of photography. For Moment in History Extra, I'm Chris Troy reminding you that history lives in all of us.